Hello everyone. Uh, great to have the opportunity to worship with you again. Uh, let's take this time to pray so we can um, prepare our hearts for worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray that you would empower us to um, be blessed through the service, Lord. Give us your presence. Um, help us to come to know you more, to understand your love for us more, and help us to grow in our faith. Uh, be honored and glorified and lifted high. Receive the highest honor and praise through our worship today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
garden key. All right, here are the announcements for this week. Our next parking lot service will be March 13th, uh, Saturday, March 13th, uh, same time, same place. Uh, please make sure to note it on your calendar and also sign up for lunch that day. Uh, this week, we're also going to do communion, uh, both in the parking lot service and also online. So please make sure to remember to have the elements ready for those of you who are doing it online uh, to do communion on March 13th. And for those of you who come in person, we'll, uh, we'll distribute the elements for you. Uh, we are doing one to three minutes, sometimes longer devotionals, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, so please make sure to remember to uh, spend a little time uh, in the morning or throughout your day uh, doing a devotional with us, uh, especially on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, uh, but hopefully you, you do them every day. Um, our next uh, monthly prayer meeting will be March 31st from 7.30 to 8. Uh, we had a wonderful time of prayer, our first one uh, last uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, it was a great time where we can get together and pray. Uh, our next one will be March 31st, about a month from now. So please make sure to put it on your calendar so you can join us for half an hour to pray together as a church. Uh, we noticed that some of you are having trouble logging in to the Zoom uh, account, to the Zoom um, uh, room and, and uh, the you know, Zoom meeting that we have after church or some other Zoom church meetings that we have. We're not, we're not exactly sure why this is happening, but it seems to be that uh, it could be related to your device that you're using or your email account or any changes that Zoom might be making uh, on their end. So it can be multiple of reasons why some of you guys are encountering a little bit of a harder time logging into Zoom. Um, just try to follow everything that they ask you to do, put in all the information and everything you need in order for you to be able to log in. Uh, we ask for your patience uh, and uh, we ask that you just, you know, log in every every information piece of information they want from you so you can join us in our zoom meeting if you still have trouble and you just have no idea how to actually fix your problem from your end then let us know please contact matthew chen uh, so that he can um, assist you let me know also so that uh, we can assist you uh, in uh, trying to fix your problem logging into zoom um, all right, uh, and also let's keep uh, Texas in our prayers. Uh, they're going through a lot because of the weather conditions. Um, so let's ask God on their behalf for God to uh, be with them, to help them in such difficult times, and to protect them and to help them and provide for all that they need. Um, all right, that's it. We'll see you in Zoom afterwards. Enjoy the service.
All right, we're in Philippians chapter 3 today. We're, we're starting Philippians chapter 3. And um, we're going to look at um, a, a bit more of a theological sermon. Um, I try to make my sermons as easily as possible to understand and as practical as possible, um, you know, for you to really be able to relate and understand. Uh, today, though, perhaps uh, there's going to be a little bit less of that because the passage itself is so uh, densely uh, theological. So we're going to probably uh, not have a lot of practical things to share, but I'm sure it'll still be a tremendous blessing for you. And, uh, and it'll give us a better opportunity to share uh, during our Zoom meeting and ask questions as well. Um, today we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about we're still on the theme of joy Paul starts chapter 3 with rejoice uh, he says uh, finally my brothers rejoice in the Lord uh, so the entire theme of Philippians is one of joy Paul wants them to rejoice and then Paul's gonna give examples of what 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 can keep them from rejoicing and how they can continue to rejoice in our passage today. Paul today uh, talks about uh, uh, his opponents. Um, he uses strong language uh, for his opponents. He calls them dogs. He calls them evildoers. He calls them uh, those who mutilate, mutilate the flesh. He, he calls them dogs, evildoers, those who mutilate the flesh. Uh, these are Paul's opponents. He's talking about the Judaizers. Uh, these were devout Jews. These were devout Jews that would go to young uh, Christian converts. And, you know, they would uh, tell them that if they wanted to become real Christians, they had to, yes, believe in Jesus, but they had to do more than that. It was Jesus plus good works. They had to believe in Jesus, yes, but they also needed to first become a Jew. Uh, if, they're, if they were going to worship a Jewish Messiah, they would say, you need to become a Jew. Uh, you need to, and, and that meant uh, getting circumcised and following the laws of Moses. Uh, so, uh, living in obedience to the laws of Moses. So, the, these Ju Judaizers would go to um, like Christian converts. You know, this is a problem that Paul had almost every city or town that he went to to preach the gospel. He would preach the gospel and after he left, these Judaizers that would come and that would, they would try to convince these new converts that became Christians through, through the gospel that Paul preached to them. They would try to convince these young Christians uh, that, yes, you know, it's, it's good to become a Christian, but they need more than Jesus. They need to get circumcised. They need to follow and obey the laws of Moses uh, in order to really be saved, in order to really become a Christian. In order to really be righteous before God, to be accepted by God, they needed to do more than simply put their faith in Jesus Christ. They needed more than Jesus. In other words, Paul is saying they needed to put their trust, and uh, not Paul, the, the, the false teachers were saying, you need to put uh, trust and confidence in your own efforts, in your own works, put confidence in yourself, not in Christ. They were trying very hard to get these uh, new Christian converts to stop putting their confidence and trust in Christ and instead put it in themselves, in the flesh, in their own works to attain righteousness, to attain salvation, to attain a good relationship with God. Uh, so th th these are the, the people that Paul calls dogs and evildoers and uh, you know, he, he's very, very using strong language. He's attacking them so that the Philippians don't, don't fall uh, for the false teaching that these Judaizers are spreading around them. Uh, the false teachers were working very hard to steal the joy from the life of the Philippians, to steal the blessings that come from Christ. 
to bring them back into bondage and slavery by removing trust from Christ and putting trust in self and the flesh. Paul is battling this. Uh, Paul is fighting and battling to keep the Philippians and us as Christians free and to keep, uh, to keep us joyful, for us to not lose our joy, to keep our joy going so we can continue to rejoice. Uh, we're going to see how Paul did this uh, so that you and I can also not live in bondage or slavery, but can be free and also keep our joy. If you have your Bibles, please open with me to Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 11. Once again, that's Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 11. Uh, this is what Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 11 says. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh, also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Uh, if anybody had uh, the rights to earn their salvation through their own efforts, accomplishments, work, success, you know, if anybody can demand from God salvation because of how well they lived and how much they have achieved in life and how successful they had been, if anybody could attain righteousness through their own efforts, if anybody could demand God to save them because of the life that they lived, uh, based on their efforts and works, based on circumcision, ba based on obedience to the law, if there was anybody that could potentially do that, it would have been Paul. There was nobody, not even the false teachers, that would come to the level of Paul when it came to living as perfectly as possible to almost have the right to demand God to forgive them because of how they lived, to, to make them righteous because of how they lived, and to save them, to give them uh, acceptance and a relationship and a salvation with God. It was nobody like Paul. And that's basically, you know, uh, the, the, what, the list that he gives us of all of his accomplishments. He's basically saying, I've, I've already tried that life. I've already tried the life where you put confidence in self. And I was quite frankly the best, the, the, the best at it. Nobody comes even close to living uh, life the way that I did, to attaining as much as I have, to have as much success, as much as I, to be as religious as I have been. There's nobody that comes closer uh, to having lived a self-righteous life. There's nobody that did religion better than Paul. Uh, that's basically what Paul is trying to say. But Paul is saying, Although there is nobody that lived like Paul, there's nobody that has a resume like Paul has. He's already tried that in the past. In the past, he lived by his own accomplishments, his own success, his own work. He, he's already tried that life. He has a lot to his credit. He can almost demand God, God, look at my life. Look at how good I have been. You better save me. You owe me. You owe me. He can almost say that to God because of how he lived. He has a lot of credit to himself. But Paul here says 
that all of his achievements, all of his success, everything that he's worked for uh, to, you know, become acceptable to God, to, to be saved by his own works, uh, to, 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 to be, uh, you know, approved by God, uh, to be saved, to try to save himself with his own efforts, everything that he's tried, everything that he's accomplished, all of his successes in life, Paul says, uh, they are rubbish. They are rubbish compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. He's saying, he's saying, uh, you know, he, all of this time he lived religiously, thinking that that was the way, putting confidence in self, thinking that that was the way to God, thinking that that was the way to find forgiveness. But Paul is saying, I, I consider all of that rubbish. The literal translation is uh, the word oh, crap. Is, you know, crap is waste. Is, is, uh, he's saying com compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, after I found Christ, all of my accomplishments, all of my successes, all of my credits, all of my gains, they're, they're worthless. They're, they're not credit to me. They're, they're worthless. They're crap. You know, it's, that life was miserable. You know, trying to live that way to always, you know, try to uh, become approved, to, 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 to be accepted, to be loved, always trying to live, just perform just so that, you know, I can be loved, I can be accepted and, and, and approved by God and others. Living that way, living as a resume, that's basically his resume, living that way, he says, it was nasty. It was like crap, you know, it, 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 was, it was bad, uh, it was awful, he, you know, it was miserable. It didn't give him the freedom, it didn't give him the joy, it didn't give him the salvation, the righteousness that he sought. He's saying that life was a waste, that life was slavery, that life was nasty, I hated it. You know, it was, it was rubbish, it was crap. And then he's saying... Uh, I found everything that I was looking for. I found everything that I was looking for when I found Christ. He's saying, I found everything that I was looking for, that I was trying to attain with my own strength and power. I found all of that when I found Christ. That's why Christ became his supreme treasure and everything else became rubbish everything else became crap everything else became trash he's saying all of his life all of his life he worked so hard to gain acceptance to gain approval to gain love from god and others that kind of life only brought insecurity that kind of life only brought slavery only brought misery he never felt loved. He always only tried to be loved. He never felt righteous. He never felt accepted by God. He always just was hoping that God would accept him. He never felt approved. He was just hoping that God would approve him. That kind of life only led him to hoping that God loves him, hoping that God approves him, hoping that God accepts him, but he never got there. It was like being in a hamster wheel, like just going and going and going. That life is tiring. That life is burdensome. That life is, 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 is a slavery, is enslaving. And, and Paul says he finally found, and he, he dumped that life. He got rid of that life, that crappy life where you put confidence in self to try to get all of these things. Uh, he, he, he got rid of that life when he found Christ. He considered everything rubbish compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. That word know there uh, is translated in the Hebrew yada, which is the most, is not just intellectual knowledge, is, is knowledge of also experience, is the highest level of knowledge, is, is, a, is the same word that is used between a husband and a wife when they have intimate relationships, the highest form of love, that you can experience with another human being. 
So that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I finally found the love that I was looking for. I finally found the love that I was looking for. I finally found the love of God. I finally knew what it meant to be loved by God. I finally understood uh, their righteousness, their acceptance, their approval from God. Uh, I finally got the acceptance, finally got the approval, finally got the love that I was working for my whole life and I never got when I tried to get it with my own efforts and with my own actions. I got it finally only through Christ. He's saying uh, the, the, the righteousness he was looking for, the acceptance, the approval, the love that he was looking for, that's not something that you can achieve. It's not something you can achieve. And if you try to achieve it, you're going to become a slave. It's something that is received. It's something that is received, that righteousness, that acceptance, that approval, that love can only come from God. It can only come from God through Christ, by faith. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying, all of my life I tried to achieve to get these things and I realized that through Christ, I realized that these things can only come from God. These things cannot be achieved. They must be received through Christ. They come from God through Christ when we put our faith in Christ. That's what Paul experienced when he came to faith in Christ. He finally understood that he's righteous, not because of his efforts, but because of Christ's efforts. He understood that he is so loved by God. He experienced, he, he, he experienced this love of God, uh, that God loves him when he came to faith in Christ. It's not just he, just, he didn't just work for it or hope for it, but he knew it deeply at the the core of his life. Uh, he experienced this kind of love. He finally found everything that he was looking for when he found Christ. So because he found everything, the most precious things in life, the things that every human being longs for, the things that everybody wants in life, whether we realize it or not, whether we have language for it or not, these are the things that we want and need most as human beings. As human beings, our greatest desire and need is to know that God accepts us, know that God approves of us, know that God loves us, and that cannot be achieved through our own efforts by putting confidence in self. That can only be achieved by putting trust in Christ. It is received the moment we put our trust in Christ. It is not achieved, it is received. And that's what Paul experienced through Christ and the moment he understood that Everything else that he worked so hard for in his life became trash. It had no value and worth. Only Christ became his greatest treasure. And that's why Paul made it his life goal uh, to get more of Christ. Just get more and more and more and, and deeper and deeper with Christ. He just wanted nothing. But this became his ultimate life goal goal to know Christ supremely, to, to have more of Christ, to know Christ, to gain more of Christ, just to go deeper in his relationship with Christ. That's what uh, Paul uh, wanted after he tasted Christ and after he got everything he's soul was longing for his entire life and he found it in Christ, all he wanted was more of Christ. He didn't want Christ plus good works. He didn't want Christ plus something else. He didn't want Christ plus my own efforts. He wanted more of Christ. And, uh, and, and that's, you know, what, what Paul is showing us today. The reason why Paul is you know, preaching a message like this to uh, Christians is because oftentimes as Christians, uh, Christ 
we are all we are always tempted we're always tempted to want something more than Christ for some reason over time for us as Christians Christ becomes less valuable Christ becomes less important uh, we tried we try to get Christ plus something else we try to to you know everything around us false teaching false religions the media the culture even our own hearts everything around us daily tempts tempts us from stopping our, our trust stopping from putting our trust in christ and and putting trust in self we try to earn things we try to work for things we try to get credit for things it's just our own heart and everything else outside of us daily tempts us to not trust in Christ, to not put confidence in Christ. It feels like something is missing in life. So we feel like we need something more than Christ. We need Christ plus something else. We need Christ plus circumcision. We need Christ plus obedience to the law. That's just sadly, as Christians, uh, what we face daily. And, uh, you know, from time to time, and especially uh, these days, it seems like some young Christians uh, are becoming uh, attracted to uh, different religions, different religions that are more on the surface level, that they, they seem a little bit more holy, you know, they seem a little bit more religious, there's more ritual, there's more liturgy. You know, there's more things that you can do. There's, there's, uh, there, there's Christ plus, you know, things that you can do. Uh, and, and this is why some young Christians that are more attracted to, you know, that are kind of fed up with the shallowness of Christianity in some ways and that want something more, that want, um, you know, liturgy, sacraments, and something that looks more holy uh, they're being drawn to uh, the Catholic Church or Eastern Orthodox religions um, and, and because they're ultimately, they're not satisfied with simply Christ. They, they, they want Christ plus something else. They want Christ plus circumcision plus obedience to the law, something that at surface level, it looks so much more religious, so much more holier but it's something we need more than Christ. And that's what Paul is adamantly attacking in our passage today. And he's saying uh, that kind of life is going to lead you to slavery. Our hearts are drawn to wanting to put confidence in self. Everything outside of us is telling us that we need more than Christ. Paul is saying, no, 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 no. No circumcision. You know, those are dogs. Uh, those are evildoers. Don't listen to them. They're going to bring you back into, into slavery. You don't need, you know, Christ plus something else. Paul is saying what you need, what you need is to daily battle your own heart to desire more of Christ. To desire more of Christ. He's saying you don't need Christ plus these other things. What you need is more of Christ. This life is not enough to get, you know, all of Christ. And then he's saying that uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we need uh, more of Christ. And that's, you know, what um, our passage today is, is showing us. And, uh, and, and that's what Paul is saying. It's not Christ plus something else but is uh, more of Christ. And, um, and that's you know, what our passage today is showing us. That's, that's our, our problem. That's our need. Um, we, we don't need Christ plus something else, uh, but we need more of Christ. Um, and, and Paul shows us you know, how we can get more of Christ. First, he says that he already knows Christ. That he knows the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. But then in, in the end, he says, in our passage today, let me read it to you again. He says, um, and starting from uh, verse 8, 
Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know, in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Uh, Paul is showing us how he, we can know more of Christ. That, that the desire should be to know more of Christ. This life won't be enough to know all of Christ. Like we, ha That should be our goal in life and we won't even attain it in this life because you know, we won't be able to know everything about Christ. We won't be able to know Christ as deeply as we want in this life. There's, there's so much that we can get from Christ, so much Christ to be gained that this life won't be enough. But he's saying that's why it should be our goal in life to, to gain more of Christ, to get more of Christ. And Paul here is saying that we can do that, um, you know, sometimes through suffering. Uh, he's saying that in the midst of suffering, he will experience the power that resurrected Jesus and he will become like Christ in his death. Um, you know, we don't need to bring suffering upon our lives if God is blessing your life uh, without suffering and giving you a season of peace. That's amazing. But if we are suffering, if life does get hard, Paul here is saying that that's, that's perhaps a gift sometimes because there's nothing like suffering that will bring out this um this this uh, resurrection power for us to experience in our lives and also uh give us the strength to get through the sufferings it is through the sufferings that we experience uh, this resurrection power it is through suffering that we experience us transforming more into the image of christ so suffering can be used for us to know Christ more, to go deeper with Christ. And, and, and that's how Paul is showing us um, how we can um, you know, rejoice in the midst of sufferings. Because that's when we get more of Christ. That's when we can know Christ more. You know, I found that ironic that Philippians is the epistle of joy, but almost everything it talks about is only problems, hardships, and struggles. And, uh, and then it made sense why a letter of joy is full of pain, suffering, troubles, and hardships. It is because in the midst of hardships that we get to know Christ more deeply. That's where the source of joy lies on. The source of joy comes from really being deeper with Christ, really knowing Christ more. This is why perhaps the epistle of joy is full of just hardship and suffering and pain. Because in the midst of that hardship and suffering is when we will experience and become like Christ the most. So that's why we are most joyful. Because joy comes from knowing Christ more deeply. And, and, and you know, that's, that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying... Um, that um, everything we're looking for, everything we're looking for in life comes from Christ. And it's not Christ plus something else, but from knowing Christ more and more, from, from going deeper and deeper with Christ in this life. That's where true treasure lies. That's where true joy is at. Um, and, and that's, you know, what, what Paul is showing us. Um, you know, many of us know that, um, you know, Dao, Dao from our church, um, and she allowed me to share this story. She, she, she said it was okay for me to do so, and that's why I'm doing it. Many of us know uh, Dao has been through a lot of, uh, you know, hardships in life, Dao and um, her family. Uh, they've, they've, they've had a lot of challenges, like we all do, but they had uh, their share of challenges and, and hardships. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a difficult uh, few years uh, for Dao and, and, and their family. It's been very difficult, actually. Uh, but the other day, um, I was talking to Dao and Julio, 
And you know, Dao was sharing with me how life is still hard. Uh, she's still suffering, but she was sharing with me how she's experiencing the Holy Spirit empower her uh, more than she ever has. She was sharing with me, Julio actually was sharing with me, how he is so committed to Christ. Julio is making uh, videos to evangelize to people on Instagram, I think almost daily. I think Dao said he's reading the Bible five hours a day. Um, he is really, he wants to become a pastor now from my understanding. He wants to go to seminary. Um, and you know, when Dao, when Dao was sharing this story with me, in my mind, I was thinking Dao won. Dao won in life. You know, maybe she's suffering, maybe she has hardships, maybe she has struggles. But I was thinking she won in life because she gets to really experience Christ in her life. Christ is not just an idea or theory that sometimes is difficult to experience and comfort. She, Christ is real to her. She's experiencing this power, uh, this resurrection power that comes to those who are uh, deep in, you know, with Christ. And she's seeing her own son, her own son's life change right before her eyes. He, he's now so committed to Christ. He's following after Christ. He wants to serve Christ for the rest of her life. And I was thinking she won. She won because that doesn't compare to all the wealth, the riches, and you know all the other stuff that, all the successes in life that we can have. All of us here, as parents, as fellow Christians, we would trade anything we have gained in this life if we can see our family members and our children really give their lives to Jesus. That's true treasure, true joy, that's true, uh, um, you know, wealth, isn't it? Uh, and, and that's, you know, what, uh, what, what, um, what we can see happening in the life of Tao and Julio. And, and, and that's, you know, what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, um, you know, if the life that is for, um, that, that we live by, by putting confidence in ourselves, uh, that life is, is trash. He's saying that life is, is misery. The life that we're looking for, everything that we're looking for in life, we can only find it in Christ. And it's not Christ plus works. It's by having more of Christ. The life that we're looking for, the joy, where joy comes from, is when Christ is still what we want more and more of in this life. That's what Paul is trying to show us. We lose joy when something else takes the place of Christ. We lose joy when it's Christ plus something else. We become slaves when we live that way. Doesn't matter how much success we have, we're still enslaved and miserable is rubbish. The life that we're looking for, everything that we're longing for, everything this, this world is asking for right now, the world is asking for uh, humility, for unity, the world is asking for peace. Uh, everything that this world is asking for, everything that every human being longs for deeply in their hearts, only Christ can give. This is why only Christ can give us the life that we want, the salvation that we so desperately want, the acceptance, the approval, and the love that we so desperately want. Only Christ can give, more of Christ can give us the freedom and the joy that we're looking for in life. So just like Paul, um, let's do everything in our power to consider everything in this life rubbish compared 
to the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We ask that you would really put a longing, a desire in our hearts to want and seek more of you. Um, even if that requires suffering so we can go deeper with you, help us to do that, Lord. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, GBC, let's do the benediction. GBC, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. Amen.